Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Health Coaches Podcast. I'm one of your co-hosts, Howard Jacobson, and today I'm your solo host. Kevin is busy uh, coveting or quarantining or dealing with stuff, so I'm going to come to you with a short episode. And today I want to talk about non-negotiables and working with our clients to identify and operationalize and empower themselves with non-negotiables. So the issue is very often our clients want to do a lot, right? They come to us and they want to work on their sleep and their exercise and their eating, and they get very excited because when they talk with coaches, you know, we encourage forward thinking and optimism and can do when we break it down into steps for them. And so they can, you know, they're, uh, what do they say, your, your eyes are bigger than your stomach. So they can try to tackle a lot. And in that case, it's very useful to ask them, okay, of all that, what, is, what do you want to consider non-negotiable? That's one use of the concept. A second use is when you're working with someone who's really struggling to follow through, who's kind of slippery about commitments, who may lack agency and self-efficacy and, you know, the kind of client like you always feel like you're dragging them up the hill and they're always backsliding. And in that case, to talk about, so what's, what do you want to make non-negotiable? And that has a very different flavor to it, even though it's the same word and the same question. When you're asking someone, okay, here's the entire palette of possibilities. Which of these what would you like to thin slice and make non-negotiable as opposed to you're doing nothing? What would you like to establish as a non-negotiable in your life? So I want you to notice how those two concepts actually um, operate quite differently. That if someone is an overachiever, asking them about non-negotiables actually lowers the stakes, lowers the pressure, allows them to let go of everything else allows them that it can be optional. It can be, you know, oh, I'll do this on a good day. I'll do it if I feel like it. I'll get to it later. Ah, oh, what a relief. All I'm doing that's non-negotiable is two minutes of breathing in the morning, for example, right, when someone's just starting out. However, for the second, <clears throat> excuse me, the second type of person who is really stuck and not following through and not honoring their commitments to themselves or to you. Calling something non-negotiable actually raises the stakes. And for that person, it's, it can be a very unfamiliar concept to say that something that I'm going to do to take care of myself is non-negotiable or to try something hard. Like people think about New Year's resolutions. They do not think about non-negotiability. They think, you know, okay, I'm going to do it, but no one's surprised when they stop after a week or two or when they never do it at all. There's very little accountability. The stakes are very low for ignoring it. It's just like, well, that didn't happen. I'll just wait until December of next year and I'll go through the whole rigmarole again. So to ask them, what would you like to make non-negotiable in your life? What habit, what behavior, what standard? Do you want to consider non-negotiable? That way you're raising the stakes. And it's a very strange question, but for most people, it's also familiar, right? Because they're also going to be thinking, oh, I apply this concept to all these other areas in my life, right? At work, people understand that certain expectations are non-negotiable. I show up for work on time. I get my work done. As a parent or a caregiver of anyone, you understand that there's non-negotiables once you accept that responsibility. I don't let my kid wait at school for two hours because I didn't feel like picking them up. I don't forget to go shopping so I don't have any food to give them, right? There are certain behaviors that we consider non-negotiable. And so to, to use that phrase, to use that term with someone for whom health behaviors are in a completely different category, Health behaviors are always negotiable, always being negotiated, always being renegotiated, always being reneged upon. So the person has no 
trust in themselves, no faith in themselves, no self-efficacy. They don't believe their own words. So if you listen to the one, uh, the podcast episode we did a couple ago about lying, right? if people don't believe themselves, then to use the language of non-negotiability raises the stakes and hyper-focuses them on the thing that they're going to do. So the key here, since we're raising the stakes, is we have to focus them very, very narrowly on something that is so small that they're willing to bet on it, that they're willing to say, I would wager a large sum of money that I can do this. So what sorts of things would somebody wager a large amount of money on if I just said they have no experience of being honest with themselves, of no experience of keeping their own word? Well, we want to help them think about it. What would you bet on yourself to do tomorrow that you already do? Get out of bed, brush your teeth, eat lunch, drive to work, take a shower. Those are your current non-negotiables. What would you bet on? What would you bet a lot of money that you will be capable of doing tomorrow? Because you know you've watched yourself doing it every single day for years. So then we want to find some new action, some new habit, some new behavior that is a similar tiny chunk that they can add. So it might just be, like I said, two minutes of meditation in the morning. It might be in the morning, my exercise is going to be, I'm going to walk to the end of the driveway and back. I'm going to check the mail and come back. I'm not going to use the truck. I'm going to walk it could be something that small, and it should be something that small, so that when they say, okay, I agree, this is a non-negotiable, there's no voice in their head that says, you're going to fail, because it's so ridiculously small, easy, insignificant, they're willing to make that commitment. So it's important when we work with clients to notice the effect of our language on them, on their physiology, on their energy, on their affect, on the tone of their voice, their prosody. So people will have different reactions to this idea of non-negotiability. What you're looking for is a sense of sort of thrill. Like the idea that I could make something, and this is specifically about that hard client who's not keeping their word to themselves and doesn't believe they can do it. You're looking for that word to trigger a whole different mindset, right? Because people understand, as I said, that in many domains of their life, they have to take responsibility. They can't wiggle out of things. But they're used to wiggling out of things because they're the only ones accountable. They're the ones accountable for their health, for their weight, for their biometrics. It's not polite to inquire about other people. What have you been eating? You look terrible. You look like you've gained a lot of weight, right? People can do this in a very private way. So when they come for coaching, very often what they want to do is make you accountable for them, right? They, like people will say, well, I, I want to get coached so that someone, you could tell me what to do. So I would have someone to listen to so I could be scared, scared of you because I'm not scared of myself. And that's why I keep failing myself. But I understand that. I remember um, taking piano lessons as, as an adult and being very disappointed. I had a young teacher, who was a young woman, probably 20, 15, 20 years younger than me. She was a little bit diffident. She was a great pianist, a great teacher, but I wasn't scared of her and I didn't practice. <laughs> That's kind of messed up. We don't want to foster that. We don't want our clients to rely on the, our, motive, our external uh, approval for them to be held accountable. They can, they can lend it to us for a little while, a couple of weeks, month at the most. But what we're really working on is when something is non-negotiable, it, be, it becomes a building block of identity. So you want to think about, for a thought experiment, what are the non-negotiables in your life? And they can be both positive and negative, right? Negative, I don't rob banks. That's non-negotiable, at least at this point. Um, Right? I meditate twice a day, non-negotiable. I do that every, no matter what. If, I have, if I'm really, really busy, I will make time. I will find time. Now, obviously, we're not talking about edge cases like, okay, 
someone just went to the hospital with appendicitis or someone did a tornado blew through my house, right? Which is where the mind wants to go. So when we're talking about non-negotiables with clients, they'll often think about, well, what if um, I'm on a 26 hour flight and I can't, you know, walk to them, you know, whatever. People will go there. One question is to deal with that is to inquire as to what the motivation is. Um, what part of them is bringing that up? Is that a serious, legitimate reason not to do this for the next month? Or is it, you know, some part of them that's trying to, to weasel out of the deal in the first place? So what's the intention of the energy? And that's a useful um, inquiry, because often we want to just argue with them. We want to say, that's ridiculous. Why are you thinking about this thing that may or may not happen that's highly unlikely, it's total edge case? And of course, when we do that, we're in an adversarial relationship. So instead of trying to convince them that that um, line of questioning of that line of thought, that presumption is, is, is counterproductive, we simply want to inquire. So where did that come from? What's the concern there? Um, is that thought and, and entertaining that thought more likely to help you succeed or keep you from succeeding? And so let them deconstruct it themselves. But back to this idea that the, the, the positive and negative non-negotiables in our life are, in fact, the building blocks of our identity. They are how we see ourselves. They are reflections of our values. And we talked about values on this podcast and the power of connecting people's minute-to-minute -minute behavior with these lofty transcendent values as opposed to just connecting it to I'm going to be three sizes smaller in six months or I'm going to get off of my diabetes meds. Right? So values don't have a time stamp on them. We don't achieve a value except in this moment. I'm either living this value or not. And so by calling it non-negotiable, you are invoking probably the, one of the highest values of all, which is trustworthiness. And you can ask people, is it important to, for you that, other, that you keep your word to others? And so if they want to keep their word to us, we want to use that to help teach them, to help guide them, to help grow their willingness, their commitment to keeping their word to themselves. Because that really is the basis of all, all forms of responsibility, reliability, and trustworthiness, is a person who keeps their word to themselves can then keep their word to others. So one final thought about this, um, it's an a, a etymological thought, and the idea of non-negotiable. So if you are a Latin scholar, you will know that non is a negative, and also negotiate has N-E-G in front of it, which is the Latin for not. And so negotiate is from two Latin words, not and otium. Otium means sort of leisure, the kind of thing you would do just for fun. It could, it could be either considered frivolous or like in ancient Rome, it was sort of things you didn't, if you were rich, things you could do because you didn't need to take care of business. So negotium, negotiate, comes from the word negotium, which is, means business. And it was sort of like the daily things you had to do to scrape by, to make a living, to feed yourself and your family, to keep a roof over your heads. And if you had the means and a free person would have the means, ideally, to do things that were non, that were neg, uh, uh, to do things that were non-negotiable, that were otium, that were sort of the arts and leisure and poetry and philosophy, things that didn't grow corn, things that didn't put food on your table. So something is non-negotiable. It actually comes back to a form of taking care of yourself, a form of not necessarily leisure, but uh, um, participating in higher things, right? So everyone that we're working with is taking care of themselves at least to the point where they can live to come to our appointments. They might be eating like crap, but they're eating. They might not be moving, but they're, they're surviving. 
They're taking care of business, even though they're not living in a transcendent, a delightful, a lofty way, and that's often very painful. So it's cool that this idea of non-negotiable, which we think of as very sort of tough love and restrictive, is actually inviting people not not leisure back into a higher way of being. So let me know what you think. I uh, hope Kevin will be back next week with another episode. Um, if you want to ask questions that we can answer on future episodes, feel free. It's, I think, healthcoachespodcast at gmail.com. You can also check us out at healthcoachespodcast.com and on all the podcast players. Love it if you could leave a review, let other people know about this. Also, we are uh, planning to start another uh, cohort of the coach training, our signature coach training course, a 12 to 13 week course, end of September 2020. If you're interested, you can go to wellstartcoach.com, read all about it. And if you'd like to sign up for an enrollment interview, you can do that on that page. All right. Thanks for watching or listening or both. And we'll see you next time. Take care.